Hello everybody, I would like to welcome you all to this video which is the first in a series of SPSS short tutorials that aim to equip you with all the skills and the knowledge in order to be able to perform statistical analysis. SPSS is one of the most proficient tools for statistical analysis purposes. As you can see it's very easy to learn and uh, it's very easy to handle the basic functionality. And as soon as you become more proficient, of course, you can proceed to scripting or using uh, the language in a more uh, efficient way. So first of all, you need to install the software and register with the appropriate license. As soon as you open that in your environment, you will see the main window, which is the data editor. As you can see, it is more or less like a spreadsheet like the Excel or some other spreadsheets that is being divided into columns and rows. If you think a little bit about statistics, what we measure in statistics in surveys or other observations or experiments is some characteristics or parameters from our population or the sample under study. Those parameters are depicted here as the variables denoted by the word var and they, they actually are the columns in our working area. The rows on the other hand are the observations or the experiments that uh, might include a series of uh, results or rec records uh, whatever it is so we, we can say that the rows are the cases while the columns are the parameters or in short uh, notation the variables. So every cell here in this grid is editable and we can write if we double click and press the enter button we can write our data either it is numeric or it's a string or a date format. So as you can see here I have inserted a few numbers. So automatically the column has taken a name var0001 by default but I can change that of course later but I want to say that the data editor is the place where we enter or we can import our data from another source. As you can see at the bottom of the screen the data view tab is enabled. Now I can switch to the variable view in order to see the definition of my variable. So to repeat we have two tabs at the bottom of our screen. The first one is the data view which allows us to see our real data, the raw data, and the variable view is the tab that allows us to uh, formulate the parameters of our variable. For example, I can change the name because I might not be very uh, familiar with this notation, so I could, for example, use the definition var1. I can also define the type, it could be numeric, it could be a string, it could be a date. If we let it as a numeric, we have the option to change the number of digits Right now it is 8, the decimal places, if we want to turn it to 0, for example. Uh, as you can see in the data view, the decimal points are not present anymore. Uh, I can change the label, I can set some values when we have a categorical variable. We can define how the program will uh, handle the missing values if we have any missing values, define the number of columns that will be viewable in the data view if I decrease that <coughs> and switch to my data view we'll see that the column is a little bit shrink. Of course we can align left right or center and some important thing is to define the type of the variable in statistics we have either numeric or categorical and those are being defined here by the scale. Scale represents numerical variables while ordinal and nominal represent categorical either 
in sorted or unsorted uh, type of variables and the role could be either input or target the input is as we say the independent the target is the dependent variable or it could represent both it's necessary to define all the parameters according to our study because what we are going to be allowed to use as analysis tools depends on the definition of the variable, the type and the role. So let's go back to the data view and see how it works. As you can see, we have some values. This is our data set. One thing that we can do with our data set is to save that into a file. So if I go to the menu here and pick the save as option, I can save that into a variety of uh, files. The default file for SPSS is the one with the extension SAV and from here I have the option to pick which variables I will allow to be saved into my file. For the time being we have only one variable so uh, I press continue, I pick the save and the file has been saved on my desktop as you can see here and I can use it uh, later for my analysis so it would be a nice idea whenever I, I perform some changes to keep my file uh, updated to save that to avoid missing any data as you can see we have at the top of our window of the data editor we have a number of options and as you can see some of the options offer functionalities related to data, functionality on how to transform our data, analyze. So here you will find all the uh, methodologies that are embedded into statistics in the default uh, package at least, how to generate graphs, use some extra utilities and how to display your windows and of course assist some assistance if you are not familiar with any any kind of functionality. This menu is also uh, present at the output viewer. So let me say a few words about the output viewer, which is another window that just popped up here as we performed the save of our dataset. The, the uh, output viewer is another window that displays the outcome of any any task that we perform or execute in our dataset. As you can see, it is divided into two major uh, subframes. To the, to the left, uh, we can see a summary of the tasks and to the right, we can see an editable area with the actual result. So let me just perform a quick analysis, calculate the average of those five values going from the analyze descriptive statistics and descriptives now I need to transfer the variable to the right box define here to the options a few descriptive statistics uh, okay okay so as you can see the SPSS has performed my a command and it has displayed here to the left a short summary of what we did and the actual set of results is presented here to the right this area is editable which means that we can as you can see there is a red arrow showing the active uh, the active part of this output and I can go to whatever I want here, to whichever selection I want. As you can see now, the table, the output table is active. I can, with the right click of my mouse, I can either copy that as an image and insert that into my uh, working uh, document. I can edit the content either in a separate window or here in line in the viewer. Uh, defining maybe some other titles, uh, some of the numbers might not fit to what I want, and so on. So, 
This is the output viewer. It is a very handy way uh, to manage your outputs. And of course, uh, you can copy the results, you can formulate in the way you want. You can also save that on a separate file that has the extension SPV and you can keep it as well for future use. I would suggest that you keep always when you work on a sample or a population or in any data file to keep both the file and the output as a backup in order to use them for a uh, future. You can always open an already saved document, SPF or SAV, and you can edit them and rerun what you have done. But if you don't keep them, uh, especially when you perform extended calculations, uh, then it will be very hard to repeat all those tasks. Another window that is also very important is the syntax editor where we are able to use the SPSS specific commands. As you can see here at the top, there is a set of commands. Those are the commands that SPSS has automatically generated from the menu commands that I have selected. So I have the option either to use the menu here and as you can see, both the output viewer and the data editor have the same if you if you scroll down here you will see that the menu is in both windows the same which means that we can perform for the same data set the same tasks either from the output viewer or from the data editor so how can we use the scripting language of SPSS instead of using the commands from the menus. We can write our own scripts and how can we do that? By opening a new syntax editor. So file new syntax and we have a new window where we can write here in this area a script using the specific language of SPSS. For the time being, we have the commands here, so we can just copy them. If we double click there, we can just for the demonstration. So I can copy those commands, paste them into the syntax editor, and as you can see right now, I can write a short script or extended script that is far more. Uh, convenient for someone who is very proficient with that because the menu is not very easy to handle when you have complex analysis tasks. Okay, so we have written the script, so the next step is to run it, execute it. We can do that by selecting the run and either we can execute it partially on a line by line or we can execute it all at once. So, if we press all, you see that again it has been executed. So, the first version is with using the menu, the second one by the script. We can also save that into a separate file with extension SPS and we can use it for a uh, future. So, those are the three main windows that uh, we're going to use for SPSS. I would say that the syntax editor is for the most uh, uh, proficient users and uh, for more complex tasks. In the majority of the cases, the average user will use the syntax, uh, the data editor and the output viewer to manipulate the basic tasks. So, uh, I think that I gave you a, a quick idea on how SPSS looks like, the major windows, and from now on, I think that you can, if you practice a little bit, you will become familiar, familiar with the environment, the menus, and how you can use that in order to proceed to next steps of creating data, importing data, uh, customizing variable types that we will see in a future video. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
and stay tuned.